If you're after a reasonably priced network storage solution that's flexible enough to grow with your needs, yet future-proof enough to cater for the high-speed 10 gigabit Ethernet bandwidth, then Buffalo could have you covered with the range of storage solutions in the Terra Station lineup, from 12 bay rack mounts to this, the 4 bay TS5410. Buffalo Technology have revamped their product stack to include a new Terra Station lineup, and we have the 4 bay TS5410 solution here, featuring a new chassis design with a more modern appeal. With VMware certification, iSCSI target support, hot swap and resync, along with cloud ready infrastructure supporting Dropbox, Amazon, and more, we have a fully featured box of tricks here. Buffalo even caters for a range of budgets by offering the TerraStation 5410 in several capacity options. We have the 4TB model here featuring two 2TB hard drives, although it's also available in fully or partially populated configurations, thus giving users the flexibility to start with a smaller initial investment and increase the total capacity when the need arises in the future. The first thing that hits you as you unbox this unit is the chassis. At this price point you'd expect a plastic chassis, but nope, you get an almost full metal box here carrying a nice industrial looking design. It really does ooze high quality. So taking a closer look at the front, we find a row of status LEDs across the top denoting system health, network activity and connectivity for both the 1 gigabit and 10 gigabit ports which we'll come to shortly. Just under this, between the power and function buttons, we have an LCD panel that gives real-time setup and IP information. While just below, we have some great drive ventilation in the form of this honeycomb-style grill, which covers the drives housed within. Talking of the drives, they are securely locked away thanks to a side key lock, with two keys being included, meaning they are physically secure from any tampering. And with the door open, we find not only does it offer good ventilation, there's also a dust filter on the inside to ensure that air gets through and nothing else. Nevertheless, here we find the four drive bays. Not only is each drive bay fully ventilated, they are also numbered and have an LED light to denote drive access over read and write. The ejection is spring hinged and hot swapping is fully available in case you use different drives on rotation or need to introduce a fresh drive in a RAID recovery. As noted, the unit can be purchased partially populated, as in my example here, or fully populated. The former reducing the upfront cost, providing the ability to add additional drives as the need arises. In this example, we're sporting the Seagate Iron Wolf drive series, although drives can vary according to capacity purchased. The specifications for this unit call out an Annapurna Labs AL314 processor operating at 1.7 GHz and is paired with 4 GB of DDR3 ECC memory, while drive compatibility sticks with SATA 6 gigabits per second. So all in all, plenty powerful enough for most data access and storage needs. These are the same specs as some QNAP and Synology devices which are both almost double the cost too. Around the back we have a pretty standard array of connectivity options. Underneath the main power input we find a nice large single fan that will adjust its RPM automatically based on the usage of the device. Beside this we find two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports for attaching external storage. These can be used for simply moving data to and from the internal NAS drives or even local backups which can be scheduled or for making any USB flash or hard drive network accessible for instance. Beneath these are twin RJ45 based 1 gigabit Ethernet LAN ports, as well as a single 10 gigabit Ethernet port too, probably making this device the lowest priced 10 gig NAS that you can currently purchase. Great for those moving large volumes of data or working with large photo or video files. So all in all, so far so good. Build quality is very impressive, no problems there at all. And with both network and power cables included in the package, hook up the unit and we're ready to set up. Upon switching the unit on, we need to wait a good few minutes for it to initialize, which is standard practice for a NAS device, after which you have either option of using Buffalo's NAS Navigator software to find the NAS on your network, or with some patience the screen will display the IP address issued to the unit, which we can browse directly to via a browser. This starts the initial setup, which is a rather straightforward process, providing the ability to set an administrative password, time zone, whether you use a proxy server to connect to the internet, as well as remote management setup, which I'll skip for the moment. 
One area where people have criticised Buffalo in the past is in terms of software, although I'm pleased to say that things have changed a fair bit, and once initial setup is complete, which takes a matter of minutes, we are presented with the main Terra Station user interface, where we can control and tweak all aspects of the system. Straight off the bat though, we're presented with a notice to upgrade the unit's firmware, which is also stated on the Terra Station status screen as well. It's always a good idea to apply such updates and we can do so from the main management menu. Bear in mind updating firmware will take some time, a good 10 to 15 minutes at least in my case, and the unit will reboot at least once too. But after a patient wait, we do finally complete and are able to log back into the system. The main dashboard provides some good information including CPU, RAM and network usage, as well as storage utilisation, whereas the side menu can be opened with some basic options to locate the device by getting it to make a sound, useful if you have several of the same units in an array for instance, as well as basic logout and shutdown options. On the opposite side though we have the main menu. And first of all we have the file sharing menu, where you'll likely want to spare some time as we can create and work with shared folders here, creating and deleting folders, as well as setting user permissions and restrictions as required. Talking of users, that's the next option where we can create and delete local or domain network users rather easily, while the following option provides the ability to create user groups for better organisation and permission management. Whereas the rest of the file sharing menu provides access to enable and disable various file sharing protocols and web services as required on your network, SMB and AFB being the most common. Next we have the storage menu, where we can see information on the drives currently inserted into the Terra station, so we can see I have two 2 terabyte drives in place at the moment, as well as see information on any connected USB drives, and then we can move on to our RAID settings. The unit came with two drives in a RAID 1 mirrored array as we can see here, although it's easy to enter the array and delete it if you prefer, although I'll leave mine for now, in order to set up a new striped array if you prefer, with RAID 5 and 6 becoming available once the appropriate number of disks have been inserted in the future. Moving on we have a cloud storage menu, where we can link to various cloud based storage services, as well as an applications menu, where we have an antivirus app available at the moment, and I'm assuming more apps can be added here at a later date. Next, the network menu is where we can make IP changes, even set up port trunking with the two 1 gigabit ports, as well as add a proxy server and join a network domain for that domain user access we saw earlier. We also have a backup menu for creating and scheduling backup jobs, with a free multi licensed copy of Nova Backup being included, and it also supports third party cloud migration with the cloud storage we saw earlier, so you can ensure you have off site backup options too, as well as Time Machine support to top it off. And finally, we have a management menu, where we can set basic NAS settings, sleep timers, power management with a UPS, update settings, and so on. Last but not least is that remote management service option we saw in the initial setup, useful for managing the unit from remote locations over an active internet connection. So all in all, the direct browser based access to the Terra Station lets you configure pretty much everything at a level whereby even the most basic of understanding in IT can see you through. It features all the versatility and control that you could want and makes the entire system quick and easy to use with minimal fuss. Now I'm reluctant to measure pure disk speed since this will be dependent upon the number of disks as well as the rated speed of the disks inside the drive. Even the RAID level chosen will have an impact, so the speed I achieve with two disks in the current RAID 1 configuration will vary to all other disk options, although what I can say is the 10 gigabit ethernet interface provides no bottleneck whatsoever, so you'll achieve the full disk speed as rated on your drives. What the 10 gigabit ethernet does provide is the ability to move data back and forward not only extremely quickly, but also with multiple concurrent services running seamlessly with minimal performance degradation, making it ideal for organisations looking to add affordable virtualized storage to their business network. All in all though, the Buffalo TS5410 arrives at both a price and hardware point that aggressively competes with the likes of Synology and QNAP on the growing demand for 10 gigabit ethernet. However, it is this device's commitment to more than speed that leaves me impressed. Options such as partial population, 3 year all in support, 
10 gigabit Ethernet at a price point that competes with many 1 gigabit devices, all wrapped up in a general feeling of solid stability in this device that leaves me pleasantly surprised. Saying that, the web management for the TS5410 is very simple and does lack some higher end features found on competing platforms. With that said, Buffalo does offer everything needed to make this an SMB class solution with multiple options for off-site backup, hot swapping drives, disk quotas, share level replication, failover and even support for iSCSI target, making this a great all-rounder.